a dark tragedy of repression persisted for generations. Do any traces of this darkness remain? Even in the country where the sky is the limit, a brief glimpse beneath the surface reveals that many people still lead covert lives. Magda Alisa Hinojosa de los Reyes, the daughter of a minister from northern Mexico, works at Baylor Hospital in Dallas. Can I, can I help you? Oh, okay. <laughs> you got disconnected. We got disconnected. Magda managed to trace her family tree back to 12th century Spain. I now identify myself as being of Sephardic Jewish ancestry, but whose families were of the descendants of the Anusim. And then from there, they came to the Western Hemisphere and went to Northern Mexico. Well, both on my mother and my father's side of the family, we found relatives in Brazil, in Venezuela, Colombia, uh, Central America, the Caribbean. And so the families just scattered through all of the um, regions of the Western Hemisphere. The tragic square, comprising part of Northern Mexico and the Southwestern United States, has a large concentration of descendants of the crypto-Jews, that is, Jews forced to convert to Christianity by the Spanish Inquisition in the 15th century. They maintain Jewish practices in secret, while outwardly acting as devout Catholics. Some tried to escape persecution by fleeing to the New World. Hundreds of crypto-Jews were burned, tortured, and murdered. At that time, Catholic church leaders wrote that Northern Mexico is full of Marranos, pigs, the derisive nickname given the converted Jews. In her youth, Magda led a Christian life without any knowledge of her Jewish roots. A sociology course she took in college changed all that. It was then that she first heard about the Jewish people and the state of Israel. Magda then embarked on a quest in search of her family's origins. So I went off to college hoping to find something, you know, a community that I belong to. And it was at age 19 when I was taking a sociology course, I first read about Jewish community. And it was like a crashing blow to my head to say, wait a minute, you mean it's not the ancient people of the Bible? You mean there are Jews in this world? And as I started looking at all the different elements of the ethnic group, um, I started finding almost all the answers to the questions I had had since I was a child. The lights of Dallas were the backdrop for her long journey to the past. The puzzle was assembled slowly and cautiously. Magda had a lot to lose, her family, and all her friends. Every step was fraught with anxiety. But all along the way, Judaism attracted her like a magnet. Magda herself was not aware of the powers that moved her and led her to marry a Jew and keep a kosher home. Look at that. No, we just I'm, American Jews. Hey, 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 I'm, I'm not writing. Right. I'm not writing. Right. 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 You're doing it, Mom. All right. Shall I? Yeah, you do that one. And just do the same way she does. So we'll Magda's children have grown up as Jews, spared the identity crisis that their mother experienced. Baruch Adah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kiddishanu B'Mitzvotav Betzibanu Lechad Ligner Shel Hanukkah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the She keeps a very traditional Jewish home, which is really comfortable uh, for me, and in my case, it gives me a kind of a kind of a, a, a double-sided Jewish identity, kind of a, a really balanced Jewish identity, because my dad's Ashkenazic, so I get the, the Ashkenazic tradition, and with with mom's uh, uh, Sephardic uh, background, I, I feel that I'm, I'm a really good uh, uh, Jewish blend. Magda's grandfather raised cattle. She remembers him slaughtering calves according to meticulous rules. Today, she knows that she was witnessing kosher ritual slaughter. Other unexplained customs were whispered to her. Eight candles were lit at Christmas, like the Jewish custom on Hanukkah. Pork and seafood 
were forbidden. Our families have a tradition that in one generation, the elders select a child to carry on the genealogy and the oral history of the family. My grandmother gave me the family history and the genealogy on both sides of the family and asked me not to forget, not to let the future generations forget who we are and where we come from. And it wasn't until I found the textbook, A Guide for the Perplexed, and started reading the chapters, all the concepts and the mystical concepts that my father had taught me. It occurred to me there that the subject matter was so familiar that my father and I must have been students of the Rambam. Magda approached many synagogues, but no one wanted to recognize her as Judaism's lost daughter. Jewish community of Dallas was her last inquisitor. Why was it so difficult for them to accept Magda? Rabbi Zimmerman of Temple Emmanuel attempts to explain. Uh, over the years, because of persecution, we Jews are very distrustful of so-called outsiders. Who are they? Why do they want in? Uh, why would they want to be Jewish altogether? Those who are truly Baalei Teshuvah, who are coming back to us after all these years, challenge North American Jews. If these men and women, for years, at the peril and risk of being found out uh, by the communities in which they lived, could live as Jews and have the courage to live as Jews, then that tells us something about the courage we need to find about our own Jewishness as well. After many trials and tribulations, Magda found her place unexpectedly at the Young Israel of Dallas, a small congregation of Israeli expatriates who discovered their Jewish identity in the diaspora. In Dallas, Texas, of all places, they returned to the faith of their forefathers. <laughs> Like Magda, these Israelis were ignorant of their Jewish heritage. Together they began to return to their roots and delve into their past. Magda was fascinated by Sephardic Judaism that conformed with the remnants of the tradition passed on to her in secret. The crypto-Jews wanted to remain part of the Jewish mainstream. They dispatched inquiries to rabbis throughout the world, seeking religious guidance. Nevertheless, they were all but forgotten. Today, we are surprised to learn that such communities still exist. The more familiar Magda became with Judaism, the more pieces of the puzzle were revealed. Why were weddings in her Christian community held beneath a canopy? Why were meat and milk kept separate? Why did they mourn the dead for seven days? The answers that began to emerge from this congregation eased her troubled soul. I come to spend my Shabbats here, my holidays, to feed my soul of the strength that uh, is required for me to make it through the week and through the year. It is a place for the first time in the 30 years since my connection to Judaism that people don't ask me who I am, what documentation I have, they just accept me as a Jew who comes to pray. I call it my little piece of heaven. Hundreds of families seeking their way to Judaism reside in Mexico and the southwestern United States. Voices from deep within their souls call on them to seek their roots. It may be a voice from heaven, a sociology course, or even an obscure public notice in a newspaper. Come on. I was cleaning the house and 
getting rid of the Sunday newspaper, and I happened to look down, and it said Longoria family suing the government for land. $1.4 million. So naturally, we got very excited. We thought, oh, money. This idea that we were going to become instant millionaires from this lawsuit, it kind of faded away. And we figured, well, maybe someday they'll settle it. Maybe we'll get, if there were that many people, maybe we'd wind up getting like $500, and for what? But the big thing, we started getting into the family and finding out who we were. Well, at first we thought we were a, of one, then we checked a little bit further, and it was checking, and it was checking, and it was going back just so far. And one of them, Trevino, mm -hmm. was burned at the stake in Mexico during the Inquisition for practicing Judaismo. The, the Lurias celebrated their return to their Jewish roots in a bar mitzvah ceremony normally conducted at age 13. Um, th this is a picture and the certificate of our B'nai Mitzvah. We decided to have the B'nai Mitzvah because even yeah. though I um, am descended of people that were Jewish, I had lost the traditions. And, and what better way to study than to go through the whole training for the Bar Mitzvah? Yeah. My son is thinking of converting. He's in the process right now, and this is his son. Shema Israel Adunai Eleheno Adunai Ehad. He's on the way. Descendants of the so-called New Christians are dispersed throughout the Americas, generally unaware of their origins or the source of their unusual customs. They have no idea why they do not baptize infants, but rather consecrate them to God on the eighth day, or why they wear their finest clothes on Saturdays. Most received no explanation whatsoever, learning to accept their heritage as a collection of superstitions. This is the church of the crypto-Jewish community in a Dallas neighborhood. There is no cross on the church roof. The only cross on the premises, at the entrance to the church, is somewhat concealed, as though present only to discharge some technical obligation. It differs from other Christian churches, reflecting the full impact of centuries of fear, suspicion, and hiding. The doors are kept closed, and anyone who wishes to enter is searched. We are welcome only because we came with Magda, whose father was the pastor of this church until he fell ill. Some crypto-Jews were told by their forebears that they are the descendants of a dynasty of Spanish nobles, and therefore are enjoined from marrying outsiders. In the chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 5. The community observed certain practices that were typical of 15th century Spanish Jews, but have since disappeared from the face of the earth. Parts of the Kabbalah that have been lost in Jewish tradition were preserved by the crypto-Jewish women, who transmitted them from one generation to another.
convicción, Señor, como obreros aprobados que no tengamos nada de que ver con el Señor. Satura nuestras vidas, Señor. Quita toda escoria, toda amargura, toda raíz de amargura, Señor. Bendito tu nombre. Toca cada hogar, In their prayers, the crypto Jews still acknowledge the presencia, the divine presence, a uniquely Jewish concept, as distinguished from the Holy Spirit of Catholicism. The culture of concealment persists, even though the people have already forgotten what they are hiding and from whom. They retain a powerful feeling of trepidation and suspicion, conditioned by persecution in centuries gone by. It is a very difficult existence. You're always on guard. You never belong anywhere with anyone. You can't trust anyone, not even your family. People that are brought into the family, even though they may be okay, you don't discuss certain topics. Why would people turn their lives about completely in pursuit of the faintest of hints? What is the origin of this mighty drive and resolve? It's easy to respond with an indifferent scientific explanation. But is the answer really so simple? There is an inexplicable quality to this phenomenon that defies human logic. Basically, we need to understand that everything is a miracle. Everything from the very small things in the world till the biggest things that we can think about is God's miracles. Why, why actually we don't see the, all of the other miracles? Because we got used to it. When somebody walks, it doesn't... Uh, American culture supplies a variety of colorful consumer goods and sensory stimuli. But it cannot cope with the silent miracle taking place in its streets. The learned scholars of young Israel even found corroboration in the Hebrew language itself. אם אתה תטייל ברחובות, אתה תראה אותם בתוך הרכב שלהם, ומין המומים כאלה, הם לא יודעים למה הם חיכו לוויקנד הזה כל כך. יש פה רקנות נוראה. יש פה, כמו שאמרתי, ים של כלום. Baylor Hospital's International Services Department, Magda welcomes high-ranking guests from all over the world. Today, the chief medical officer of the Pakistani army is visiting. Because I understand that you were interested in... The whole center is always... Okay. In 1992, Magda gathered courage and visited Israel for the first time. When I boarded the airplane, I felt like I had gone on the wings of the angels that took me home. I cried all the trip, but there were tears of joy, and all the places I went, all the places I walked, reminded me so much of home, like I had been there before. Everything, the markets, the tapestries, the places to went, that I went to, it was just like being home, because it is home. It's the first time I play, felt like I was at home. Going to the hotel to pray was the deepest of all the experiences, because no word could come from my mouth. All it was tears, deep, deep tears. Many of the people that come here uh, have Anusim uh, ancestry, regardless of whether they come from Mexico, 
from Chile, Argentina, Venezuela, the Caribbean, the Middle East, perhaps, Europe. We all have something in common. It's a common thread. And somehow, everybody that comes here has a reason to come. They all seem to find me. That sometimes I wonder that if it's we're supposed to all meet, we're all supposed to cross each other's path. We're really just one big family. Crypto Jews are not unique to the Americas, but are scattered throughout the world. A Bedouin tribe in Saudi Arabia, a peaceful village in Europe, and entire regions of Iran. Gathering all these exiles yields hundreds of millions of crypto Jews. If we include them together with the lost tribes, their number will be as great as that of the stars in heaven. In many crypto Jewish families, the firstborn son would become a priest or monk, eliminating any doubts about the family's good Christian reputation. Magda's father, too, was a minister of the crypto-Jewish community for many years. These prelates would hear the confessions of their own congregation, protecting the community from exposing its secrets. Despite all the hints that Magda received from her father over the years, she never heard him admit explicitly that the family is of Jewish origin. We have a personality that we cannot hide. No solamente por lo exterior. Not only for our exterior the appearance, uh -huh, the appearance. Pero también por cómo actuamos y cómo nos comportamos. And, but also by the way we behave and we uh, carry ourselves and our demeanor. Y cómo prosperamos donde quiera. And how we succeed everywhere we go. Pero cuando leemos y oímos de Israel algo but when we read or we hear anything about Israel, something in stirs inside of us. And it's not a sympathy that we as Christians have toward Israel. This is something that it is more of as, as the term that he said that the blood always tells you, always moves you. Me fascinan las declaraciones del profeta Ezequiel y otros profetas. I am fascinated with the declarations of the prophets, the prophet Ezekiel and the other prophets. Sabrán todos los pueblos. And all the people shall know que hay Dios en Israel. That God is in Israel.